I tend to forget that I live on an island. A small island, but one that continues to amaze me with her stories every day. There's just something about the breeze and the sound of waves that calms me. I guess I can understand why Uncle Ong decided to move from the city and live on Pulau Ubi. Sao 因为这个是以前我卖沙爹你就会听到那个声音啊那个里面就有螃蟹了这个是一个兴趣出去外面做工做了这样螃蟹又捉没有了是你的,就是你的,不是你的,就不是你的。As you can tell, I am terrible at art. And my fishing is only slightly better. Ahwa will tell you the same. Maybe I should take the boat over to visit the funny fisherman. Say hi to his dog and his duck too. We are 不知道Local Farm本本是什么 有养什么我有那个Red Scrapper Golden Scrapper Golden Pamano Sea Blast Grouper Grouper就有很多种了 Giant Grouper Hybrid Grouper Asia Grouper 我叫阿华 今年65岁 还没有结婚 今年嘛 我有坐车了也有养鱼了现在变成我的赛迈了起头我是喜欢钓鱼后来很久不要养了然后我就跟他买过来了钓鱼那个feel吗个人跟人好比吗有的时候打麻将有的时候打球好像我喜欢钓
。我们海中的水是六个小时上，六个小时是我我们的叫做瓦水啊，瓦水啊。他们在池那边的是死的，哎，尿啊、血啊，哦，在里面的，全部在池里面不会跑的嘛，泥土会要有臭味，就是他们养在池的。来，八十个我叫发姆，哎，他就也看看到我很多鱼吗？就来问我，可以不可以合作？他要卖啊，洛克方。我说可以啊，啊，他们在在做修缮，我是在养鱼了，然后就做到今天喽。哦，去我一全部款待我的老板 Brian。Our restaurants Jalan Riang, Serangoon Outlet and Haji Lane. We are using live or fresh seafood to create brunch menu, Western brunch menu like fish and chips. Uh, pans here, sea bass, spaghetti. It's a very classic dishes, but you can try the difference between a local fish and a fish from other areas. But I, in my own, I don't fear. I'm in Singapore. I don't fear. 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 这边的人呢、啊，吃东西会比较安全呐、啊，比较健康，人家不敢乱来。第二，我们养鱼料，然后我们的 man power， 一分钱一分货，比别人贵了，所以呢，我们的费用全部贵了。你你你养了，你长大你叫我买便宜啊？不是我我在家里睡觉比较好。每个方都会养狗的，为什么？就是人家来，他会 alert 我们嘛。呀，也是我朋友带来的。他他说我们这边买鸡蛋的男人拿两只鸭给我吃鸭蛋，给龙哦，真正给龙哦。以前的人是用那个啊柠柠檬木来插的，现在柠檬木没有了，所以我们就要用,用那种啊麻辣木啊，个木太贵的关系，所以变成新加坡的给龙越来越少。罗定方是会摇的，用 b a r r e 来做的，给龙是用坡插下去的，不会摇。小孩子现在根本都没有机会上来这种地方。应该退休后会在这边呢。哇，这边风景好，空气好，没烦恼。在外面就在外面就不一样了。在外面就坐在咖啡店那边，不是喝咖啡就是喝酒。在这边你看，空气多么好，没有黑烟，没有什么。Thank you, thank you. 好， okay, looks like I'll have to go fishing another day because I am hungry. Back in the 1920s, this area was an enclave for piranhas, and if you look closely, you'll see flower motifs that symbolize fertility. Some of their homes still stand today, and they're great for pictures too. I know of another home that's quaint and quirky, and if you pop by when Uncle Chong's in, he might just give you a tour of the statues and stuffed animals. They call it Howard of Curios. They call it Tanah Merah theme park. But for me and my neighbors, it's a mini geological garden. A lot of people, they just say, that, oh, can we take pictures? Sometimes they will press the doorbell and say, hey, can we look inside your house? I say, sure, why not? So I bring them in. So this place has become the attraction within Singapore. My name is B.W. Cheong. I'm currently 64. Since I retired, I spent more time to create a mini geological garden. I want to have the opportunity to share with people among the neighborhood. They can come here to take pictures with their families to enjoy the little garden. Yeah, I like animals. Sometimes I go to the zoo. I will spend a lot of time talking to them. I always like this full-size statue. Occasionally, I will climb up, climb up and sit on my horse. It gives me the feeling that I'm living in a zoo, <laughs> in a real zoo. Uh, recently, one of the police that passed by my house, so they said that we, they are very amazed with the setup. Can we take some picture with you? So I took picture with the police. I told them that, wow, you all should patrol more often so that my things don't get lost. <laughs> okay, go inside. When I was young, we stayed in a kampong area. So when I move into this estate, I find that some neighbors are very reserved. I always had the feeling this small estate, we should actually try to bring everyone out to socialize so that we can create a kampong in case of any emergency and can always look out for each other. People who want to come, I'm quite accepting for them to come to my house to look at the things because I believe in sharing. 
a lot of my neighbors are very supportive and sometimes they should say hey you should put here you should put there so this is also part of the community spirit that we gather together yeah when I was asked to dispose the things outside my house, I have to sell them all because I don't have space to keep them. It's a pity because collecting all this is not cheap. But no regrets, I have achieved my passion. And I think that passion is something that is intangible. Money can't really relate to the kind of happiness, fulfillment and satisfaction in life. What I love most about the East is the food. It seems like there's food wherever I turn my head. Or maybe I'm just really hungry. At one such street here, I met Auntie Nancy. She's so full of life and love for the German food she serves. I can almost hear her laugh. Why I choose the pretzel as my logo? Because I tie a knot with the German. <laughs> Actually, in Germany, every bakery, there's a pretzel sign outside. Hi, it heißt Nancy. Nancy. I married to a German. Together, we set up Werner Savant since 1988. This is Singapore's first German bakery. I love to cook. Food to me is like my passion. When I come to work, I bake bread. I bake lots of bread. We have about eight different types. Like we have craft corn, gold corn, muesli. We have German rye, rustic, spelt. The late Mrs. Lee Kuan Yew used to come to our shop and I remember their flavour is craft corn and German rye. The unique thing about German bread is actually sourdough. Multi-grain, no fat, no sugar. It's soft inside, must have a crust outside. It's very solid. For the German bread, too light is no bread. German sausage, we have different, different regions, different kind of sausages. I told my husband, Singaporean love chilli and garlic. I add in one of them and it become my signature sausage. Mm. Our Werner Salmon sausages is very unique because it's very traditional and it's all handmade. It's actually from my father-in-law and I love my father-in-law a lot. That is why I want to carry on to spread it to all over the world. I really want the world to really know that there is such a nice, home, authentic German sausage which they can enjoy. Buenos Aires means a lot. It's like a baby to me. I have good time, I have bad time, I have happy time, and I enjoy customer coming in. And, wow, I see you like a, like a precious like that, you know? I really love my customer a lot because they are just like, like my friend. I'll be the same. <laughs> Done? Yes. So now I can make some sausages. I wonder if the Popia shop is open. This is a random and weird fact, but the owner of the shop, Michael, has really soft hands. And it turns out it's got to do with the Popia dough he handles every day. This could perhaps be the SK2 of my family. La. She asked me how come my hand is so soft, although I went to the gym and I should have calluses and all that. I suspect, right, probably it's due to the dough I'm holding every day. You know, SK2 is also made of rice uh, essence, right? So perhaps there's some connection there. Mm -hmm. Maybe right, the skin can be used for face masks next time. <laughs> My name is Michael Kerr. I'm the third generation owner of uh, Gui Guan Hua Ju Chet Popia. This business was started by my grandfather 80 years ago. Many people ask me whether Gui Guan Huat is my grandfather's name, but uh, it isn't. It's a company name. Legend has it that thousands of years ago in China, there's this scholar who is uh, studying very hard for the imperial exam. So the wife decided to help him out. She saw some pancakes and some leftover veggie, an idea struck her. She used the pancake and wrapped all the veggie into it and passed it to her husband. So the husband can actually study on one hand and eat the road pancake in the other to save time. So that's how he passed the exam and becomes an official. The disclaimer is right, I, I'm not too sure. The Popia purists right, may say otherwise. Soft in texture, not easily taut, and the thickness is a two mm uh, throughout throughout that piece of skin. 
the hammock skin will be softer. The machine made one right is probably more plasticky. Yeah. Generally, it's the guys who do the skin. Don't look at the dough we are holding. Perhaps it's just maybe what 300 grams. But try swirling it right hours on end, and then it feels like a, a, a boulder. Okay, Pali, Pali. <laughs> in my pharmacy days, right, everything must be to the decimal point. But back in my shop, when my father taught me the trade, right, it's all about experience and feel. This shop of mine right now, right, is a temporary location. I'm actually renovating my old place. We're gonna have a heritage gallery to showcase the art of making popia and popia skin kui pai tea to the younger generation and to tourists abroad. Something is seared into my heart la, that I, I need to protect this heritage food that has brought me so many things. La. Ah, the East. You'll always have my heart and my stomach. I'm sorry, excuse me. I, I guess that's enough for today. 